Welcome to the Tea Grannies. I'm Elise. And I'm Maria. Today we're here to talk about our NaNoWriMo progress. So pour yourself a cup of tea. And let's get started. All right. So full disclosure, we are recording this on November 5th at 2.03 p.m. Um, because you care. <laughs> uh, no, but we're just saying this is how far we are into nano. We understand that this episode is coming out like a week later. So our progress will be a little different by then. But for now, we're just gonna, that's what this episode is about. We're talking about where we're at in the moment. So nano in the trenches, we are, we are in it. We are fighting the fight. And that means that we are officially at the end of the first week of NaNoWriMo, and uh, this is our this is our little check-in, because we've been kind of checking in throughout the week, but it has been, it has been a week, so... It's been a rough week already. <laughs> we're catching up with each other while we're catching everyone else up here, too. Um, yeah, so for my part, I only wrote on Monday and Wednesday this week. Uh, for perspective, NaNo started on the Monday, so I wrote on day one and day three. Um, oh, today's day five. I wrote a little bit today. Um, planning to write a little bit more and hopefully that all goes well. But, um, I knew this would happen because my Tuesdays and Thursdays are generally, I don't have time. Uh, and that's just the way my schedule's rolled out. So before we started NaNo, I went onto their resource, one of their resources page. I can't remember what it is, but we'll add the link into the description later so that you can access it if you'd like. But essentially they had a quiz and the quiz was about, um, my schedule, which is, terrifying because I don't want to divulge that information to anyone who's going to judge me but thankfully it was just an AI and the AI told me when I should write <laughs> during the whole month of November um so I used that and I put it all into my calendar that okay this day I'm going to get this many words this day I'm going to get that many um and that accounts for my Tuesdays and Thursdays that are booked solid like I generally at most I can see myself getting maybe 200 words in there if I'm having mm -hmm. a, a decent day um but I have to make sure I can get those in basically half an hour. So that's about it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, then I also got FOMO and booked out my weekend. So my future's a little bleak. But um, <laughs> I met I met the the weekly count. I had I had a really great first day, which we'll talk about a little bit later and when we talk about some successes. But yeah, for now, um, I'm I'm punishing myself a little bit because I know I've I've done terrible things with my schedule. <laughs> which is pretty much what is happening to me as well. Um, so I kicked off Nano with my birthday. Yeah. So exciting. So I was actually, I planned my birthday. I always book it off and I always planned my birthday around NaNoWriMo. I so I that. like, oh, it was great. I like got up and like wrote in my pajamas and oh, then like yes. I went for lunch and I came home and I wrote some more. That and, sounds like, it like was the just, best birthday ever. It was a great day. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that was kind of how I got started. So I had a really good first day too. Like I hit over 2000 on the first day, which uh, was pretty good considering like for the last couple months, I've been writing like no more than like 400 words every time I sat down. That's, so I was like, yeah, happy. Yeah, I was good. Uh, and I did really well the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, the first three days. And then day four, which was yesterday, I had a random last minute meeting that went for like an hour and a half longer than I planned, which ate I... into my whole two hours of writing time that I had blocked. Uh, so that sucked. And I almost gave up. Like I was like, I have a cushion, like I've written ahead and like, maybe I'll just give up. And then I was like, no, you'll be mad at yourself. And this is where like the accountability with yourself comes in. I was like, yeah. I will be mad at myself. So yeah. I, I ordered takeout. Smart. And then uh, I sat down at my computer and I looked at my little DoorDash notification and I was like, okay, <laughs> I have 40 minutes. To write. Ooh, like a built-in um, writing yeah, sprint built timer. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, and I'll definitely be done in time because I'm starving and I'm not missing dinner. <laughs> that hangry <So>, energy. <laughs> that hangry energy. So I wrote 949 words. Yeah. Which was pretty good. That's and basically a thousand, chapter. which is Basically, awesome. yeah. I was quite happy about that. So, yeah. you know, and then I sat down and had dinner and like kind of like had to decompress after. I was like, mm -hmm. whoa, that was intense. And I also did that same quiz uh, from the Nano website, like about when you should write. Yeah. And mine told me to like write more on the weekends. And then I was like, well, but then I looked at my weekend schedule and I was like, hmm, I don't actually think that that's feasible. 
<laughs> weekends. <laughs> I don't know what it is about Saturdays, but it's like everybody requires my presence on Saturday at something. And like all day Saturday, I'm just booked. I very rarely get to write on Saturday. So I was like, okay, I got a plan for that. So again, with the writing ahead. So I didn't quite get there yesterday. So my goal is today to at least get back stay on track with the nano goal, which is like, I think 8,300 and something words today. Okay. So as yeah. long as I write like 1200 words today, I'll be totally on track, but I need to build up that, that cushion again. Cause <laughs> shit happens. <laughs> <laughs> it does. <laughs> yeah. Uh, day one for me was also pretty great. Like I mentioned, um, I, I go through these phases. This happened last year for nano too. I was telling you just before this, um, so on Monday, I wrote over 9,000 words. Um, <laughs> Which is and amazing. That's insane. I never write more than, like, a good day. I was telling someone the other day, a good day for writing for me is, you know, two to 3,000 words. If I can get that, like, that is a good writing day. Mm-hmm. I'm really happy. If I get 4,000, geez, I'm over the moon. I need a reward. I, you know, I can write off the rest of the week because, you know, I had that one great writing day. Uh, so 9,000 is, um, that's insane. That is Mm -hmm. shouldn't happen that doesn't happen very often um (laughs) so yeah I was uh, pretty pretty happy (laughs) with myself yeah very amped um (laughs) last year was my my record nano year that everyone's very excited about and I got two different 10k days which you know I didn't quite reach that with my Monday but I'm not complaining because (laughs) it's close enough the rest of the month it's close enough yeah so so day one i it was it, it was a big success, I guess. We're into our success section yes. now. Um, huge success. The only way that that bites you in the butt is when you're like, oh, I did so good. I don't have to write today. I did so good on Monday. Mm-hmm. It's Wednesday. And, ah, I don't need to. But then I had that same moment like you did of, if I don't write today, I'm going to be mad. Yeah, I'm going to be mad yeah. at myself. So, yeah. yeah, I did sit down and write on Wednesday, even though I didn't need to. Technically, I didn't need to write until the weekend. I think it was like until tomorrow. I could have not written mm-hmm. a single word until tomorrow and I would have been on track. Uh, thankfully, I did not do that. I wrote on Wednesday and I'm going to do some more writing today, hopefully. And that way I don't have to push as much out on the weekend based on my schedule. So that's Smart. that's been good. But the little buffer of day one being such a good day, that's a that's a that's a nice that's a nice thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's a really nice thing. I don't know. Are you are you neurotic like I am? Where um, even though you know you're ahead of the deadline, you're ahead of schedule, way ahead, like mm-hmm. significantly ahead. Um, you're still terrified of not meeting the deadline. So you're like, no, every moment not doing it is a moment wasted. And even though you're ahead right now, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Are you like that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. It's not yep. just me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we can work. And then that. if I fall, even like. Right now, I'm worried that I will be, like, just meeting the goal, yeah. and that will feel like a failure, kind of. Like, oh. I put all this pressure on myself to, like, write ahead this month. Oh, okay. And, like, that's my goal. I'm, like, I'm going to try and write, like, instead of, like, whatever it works out to be, like, 1,667 words a day. My personal goal to myself has been to write 2,000 words a day, mm. which um, out of the four days, I have done it. 50% of the time already. So twice. And that's great. Twice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have high hopes for today, but, or tomorrow. But we'll see. Yeah. But we'll see. Yeah. Uh, in, in a perfect world, I would have one of those really big days like you did. I don't think I could do 9,000 words in a day. Um, <laughs> yeah. For that, perspective, that was me sitting at my desk literally all day. Like I got up, I sat down. That was an all day. I did a couple of minor tasks in between things. But other than that, I was like, mm-hmm. okay, no interruptions. I don't think I even had our message app open. Which is smart because that is distracting because yeah. I will like message you and then I'll be well, like, well, we get to chat and it's right. fun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think my record for like a really good day is 4,000 words. Which is um, amazing. Pretty so creepy. Amazing. And when I hit it, I was like, did I count that right? Because there's no <laughs> way I wrote 4,000 words in one day. Like I'm really a slower, or I used to be a really slow writer, NaNoWriMo, and like kind of forcing myself to write drafts like mm-hmm. in a timeline has really helped me 
get more words out. But sometimes some days it's still a struggle, which we are we are going to get into in a moment. We will get into struggles. <laughs> yeah. But for successes, yeah. I think I had a couple more. Like we were going to talk about outlining because mm. yes. um, if you've listened to any of season one, you've probably heard us say <laughs> something to the effect of outlines. Blech. We don't do that crap. Um, we are both cancers. Or we've tried and failed yeah. too many yeah, times. Exactly. So we just don't try it anymore. Exactly. It's been a bad experience. It's tra- traumatizing. Don't want to try that mm-hmm. again. Um, but yeah, that's a whole lot of exaggeration as we, I think, both discovered this month. Mm-hmm. We both outlined the draft that we were going to write for Nano ahead of Nano, right? Ahead of it starting. Mm-hmm. We both ahead. had an outline. Yeah. I think you had intended to do that because you're rewriting something that you wrote mm-hmm. before. But for me, this is a first draft. I had no intentions of outlining. I knew I, I had the ending like with this draft because it's book three in a series. Um, and I want it to be a trilogy. So I want the series to end here. I decided, mm-hmm. okay, I need to know my ending so that it doesn't become one of those 10 seasons and counting TV shows that become crap by season two, but they just keep going for the money. Um, yeah. So I wanted to end at book three. So I picked my ending and that was supposed to be enough. But then a couple of days before Nano, I was trying to get some words in just to kind of get some momentum going beforehand. So I could stop in the middle of a chapter. And when Nano started, it'd be like, okay, I just dive right in. Um, and it wasn't working. <laughs> I was not getting words. I was staring at a blank page and trying not to be sad. And somehow I just started thinking, okay, I can't figure out what to do. I have no idea how to start this chapter. What do I want to happen in the chapter? And this is how I get unstuck in the middle of a draft when I... Um, when I hit that mid-month slump or whatever. But um, I used it here. It's kind of earlier on in the draft, so I wasn't expecting to need to. So I just started planning out a chapter, and then I started planning out the next mm-hmm. chapter. And then that led into a different character thing, and I started planning out that chapter, and then that just kind of like snowballed. And by the end of it, I had this whole thing. I was like, that that takes me from here to the end that I had planned for. Um, is this a dream? <laughs> I think that's probably what my reaction was because, as you said, like you never get a 4,000 word day. I never outline. That's not a thing that I do. But for, I mean, apparently for my Monday word count, it was very helpful. So Mm -hmm. (laughs) overall, I consider that a huge success. And I did outline this time. So we had a writer's conference the weekend before NaNoWriMo mm-hmm. started. Right. And I went to, I think I went to one or two workshops on outlining. Because I yeah. was like, look, like I, I kind of figured it was one of those things where I was like, I'm sure I could learn how to do it. Like yeah. if I just put some effort Absolutely. in, maybe I can learn how to do it. Whether I stick to it is a whole other thing, but I'm going to learn. So I went to one and I, I was sitting in the, the lecture and I'm like, you know, I doodle and I'm like telling myself I'll take notes, but I, I really don't. <laughs> and then uh, she was talking about the uh, different ways for outlining, which we will maybe do an episode on at some point. I want to get better at it. And so I started making like a point form list. of like how it would apply to my second draft that I'm working on. Uh, because when I finished the first draft, I actually wrote it for last year's NaNoWriMo. The only thing I was really, really sold on was my first couple chapters and um, like kind of making sure that like they it's an enemies to lovers kind of fantasy romance but I wanted them to be married earlier in the story because I mean the happy ending it doesn't end when you get married like that's kind of when it Mm. actually starts so I was like well I'd love to see them like work through the beginning of their marriage together as well so I was like okay I want to stick with those things. And that's, that was pretty much, those the only thing I was really had to stick to. Um, and so then the outline started to take shape and then we brainstormed a bit and I outlined all the way to like the end, <laughs> like just really <laughs> brief outline. Yeah. And uh, I was like, what the heck? But then I, <laughs> I was finishing writing uh, the other day and I was like, I'm going to check my outline. And I was like, Ooh, I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> So apparently when you outline, you kind of have to check in with your outline as you're writing to make sure that that's all <laughs> So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work on that a bit. But oh, uh, yeah. yeah, and I had already rewritten my first two chapters, which I was planning to keep as they were, like I said. Uh, so I was pretty much diving in from third chapter on for this mm. draft. And yeah, it's been, it's taking a completely different shape, but I'm okay with that. Yeah. And the fact that you're, like, at least loosely following the outline. I think that's the mm-hmm. whole point. Um, yeah. 
I, yeah, we're getting into, we want to talk about some struggles that we're, we've been mm-hmm. having next. Um, and I think this kind of leads into it really well. Um, I'm in a class right now for, oh, what's it called? I'm not, I never remember the name of the class because it's really long. It's something like advanced business writing and the professions or so, it's, those are all parts of the name of the course, but I can never remember how it strings together. <laughs> <laughs> it's not important. The important thing is I'm taking a writing class right now. Um, mm-hmm. And the first kind of section, and, it, and it's for nonfiction, I should be clear about that. It's for nonfiction writing for business and the professions. Like that's, you know, pretty self-explanatory. Um, so it is a little bit of a different mindset, but the first couple modules of the course have been all about uh, drafting and the idea of invention and how you come up with ideas and how you decide to start writing them down. Um, and so the textbook and... Um, there's a couple of different books on writing that we're reading at the same time as part of our required readings for the course. Uh, just kind of go through the different kinds of strategies that writers tend to use when they're in the drafting phase. And usually people will use a mix of different ones, but there's certain people that swear by things like free writing or um, they do a big, I mean, you and I, we brainstorm together all the time. So mm-hmm. that's a big part of, of our writing process, whether it's verbally out loud together or um, through a chat. Um, just sending ideas back and forth and hearing comments on them. That's a great way to start generating ideas and getting excited about about different things. So I've been reading about all these different kinds of strategies and, and ways to consider uh, starting and how, how writers start and how they get into starting an idea because that's kind of a very loose, unknown, mysterious process, I think, that intimidates a lot of people. But one of the strategies that they've talked about is outlining um, and the pros and cons of it, which I typically hear about outlining from people who outline and who are Mm -hmm. like swear by it. And they're like, oh, you don't outline? You can't be a good writer until you outline. I've heard that. Um, (laughs) I've heard people say things like no good writer gets anywhere without outlining. So, you know, that feels real good on the the (laughs) self-esteem. (laughs) <laughs> when so, it's like uh, an impossible ask for you yeah, <laughs> just like stabbing the knife and twist it Thanks. further why don't you Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so that's you know that's been a big struggle we can put that under the struggle category i struggle with the mm-hmm. fact that i don't outline because i don't like it but when we do outline like you were saying it's it's a very you have a very loose short outline it's very brief um and i think that's that's where the strength of it comes in for pantsers and people that don't typically do it or they, they they find it frustrating i find it frustrating to outline because then i feel like i've written the book already and then i'm bored it's like i know what's going to happen why why am i doing this i write books for myself i write books to discover to discover the story and to go on a journey with the characters and that's what's fun about it for me so i can't if i want to get anywhere with a draft i can't take that out of the equation and i think how i've managed to trick myself into outlining is by keeping it brief and keeping it short or by not outlining outlining the whole draft just outlining a Mm -hmm. chapter and when I say outlining a chapter I don't mean like I go through every single moment of the scene and I say so and so speaks here and like no that's writing the chapter I go through my structure and be like okay what needs to happen in this scene biggest points maybe three biggest points or whatever so and so needs to talk about this thing this thing needs to be uncovered so and so needs to get from this place to this place that's about it I'm not giving myself details of how that all happens and how it all unfolds. I don't even necessarily say who's all in the scene because that can throw people in at random if if it happens to work out. And then I have that discovery element of I don't really know what's going to happen, even though I know exactly what's going to happen. So, yeah, it's a brain trick. And I think I think it works out here. But, yeah, the the whole struggle of outlining, I think it can work for everyone. Like you're saying, it's something you can learn. It's a skill you can learn. Mm -hmm. But it's going to look different for you than it's going to look for someone who is like a through and through outliner and can't start until Mm -hmm. the outline because there's writers like that too like they can't start working on an idea until they have a complete picture of it i would never write anything if i did that all of my (laughs) ideas start with like a vibe yeah exactly i like that vibe i like that vibe Hmm. a lot and then i like (laughs) add one or two things and then i'm like okay that's like a first that's almost a first chapter now and that's that's (laughs) how i start all my projects yeah if i had to outline to write i would never have done it Mm -hmm. we would not be doing this podcast (laughs) um the one thing i'm running into i don't think it's necessarily tied to the outline i think it's tied to the fact that i'm doing a second draft yeah is i'm being a lot harder on myself Mm. uh my writing the quality of my writing and what's happening in every scene where I'm like, yeah. in a first draft, I just let it take me. Yeah. 
I don't go, oh, this needs to happen here or, or anything really in, in a first dress. I'm, re- I'm just following my little characters and like, you know, I'm like, I'll add plot later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but in the second draft, it's, it's been way harder for me. Like I am sitting there going like, mm-hmm. oh, should I have this happen? Mm-hmm. Like, what if I, and you know, I'm second yeah. guessing a lot of my ideas yep. and that isn't even something I normally run into in a second draft too much. And I think part of it is like, I want this draft to be ready to go to beta readers after I've done it. Oh, so I'm okay. trying to like make it too polished and I should yeah. really just roll with it. Yeah. Like I do with a first draft mm-hmm. because I already know, like I have an outline, like I'm not, uh, I'm not going to be going completely off the deep end with it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's been kind of a struggle for me. Um, and now that I've articulated it, I'll probably stop struggling with it as much. <laughs> like, Verbal processing for the win. <laughs> podcast therapy session. Um, the other thing that's been killing me is the time management because yeah. uh, I don't take my own advice. We told you guys last episode, clear your schedule. And, like, we had so your much good time. advice for everyone. <laughs> oh. We have great advice, mm-hmm. whether we follow our own advice or not. I mean, this is the struggle. Do as I say, um, not as I do, please. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I, it's something for me sometimes I'm like, oh, look at all that free space on my calendar. Like I got to fill it with something. Mm-hmm. I, it's something I should work on just in general. Uh, so what I started doing this week when I noticed myself doing that was I put Nano in my calendar in like a two or three hour block. Nice. Uh, and that's, I think, going to help. <laughs> not yeah. today and not tomorrow. But after that, <laughs> it looks like it's going to be great. Uh, the other thing I've been running into, um, this is not me shifting blame, but my husband's been off work <laughs> with a broken finger. <laughs> So uh, my work from home days have been um, interrupted more frequently, mm-hmm. <laughs> and That's a gentle it's been way fine. It. Yeah, it's nice. It's been nice having him home uh, for some things. Like the best part is like uh, a lot of the stuff that I sometimes do during the day is like breaks for work, like dishes and stuff like that. He's been doing all that, Aww. so I go have more time to write. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, I haven't really had <laughs> much more time to write. Because he pokes his head in my office and he's like, should we take the dogs for another walk? Or do you want to go get coffee? Because like, he's bored. He's, he's so bored. bored out of his mind. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I'm like, oh. sometimes I turn around. He's like, oh, are you busy right now? I'm like, if I weren't busy, I wouldn't be sitting in my office in front of my two computers. <laughs> what do you think? So, <laughs> right? So like, oh, I, that's man. something that I wasn't uh, planning on having to deal with. No. Uh, so that has been... That has been a little rough. He goes back to work next week, though. So I, feel like, <laughs> I feel like I might get more stuff done. Um, yeah. So we'll see how that goes. But yeah, that was one of those like outside distractions that I, I hadn't planned for mm-hmm. uh, or really thought about. So uh, I've been trying to work through that a bit. And and, it, and to be totally fair to him, I find him easily distracting because like I love to go hang out with him. So when he's like, "Do you want to go for a coffee and go to the bookstore?" I'm like, "Oh yeah, yes. <laughs> I'll do this shit later." <laughs> Yeah, why do you think you married him? Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. He's kind of an enabler. So, um, yeah, so we will, we'll see how that goes next week. But I really, I do need to work a little bit on that. And the other thing that I'm bad about is giving myself breaks. Uh, So sometimes like I come home from the office because I have like a hybrid schedule where I go into the office a couple days a week. So I'll come home and just like try and come into my home office and sit down and like write and I just cannot transition and the so the mistake I've made with my time management is I have to give myself some time to like transition from my tasks so like yeah next week on my office days I'm gonna come home and like take a lunch break you know like I should be doing Uh uh-huh should be doing anyway (laughs) but don't yeah yeah and then sit down to like write or whatever and just and not multitask like I find like I said I have the double setup like I have my desktop computer Mm -hmm. work computer and then my laptop so I'll be writing and I'm like oh I better check in on that work thing and I'll like turn my chair and check my work thing and then I get pulled out of my own story yep and then I end up staring at the page for a long time so that's the other thing that I'm going to work on the rest of the month is like when I'm writing I'm writing mm-hmm. and when I'm working I'm working mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> that's no, that, my plan. <laughs> um that that and your note about you being in your second draft and like being more critical of yourself um mm-hmm. reminds me of the chapter I just read for school because it was talking about people that try to write the 
the draft perfect the first time and how much yeah. that blocks you because you're just your inner critic is completely alive in that moment it's criticizing yeah. every word you choose and every phrase and every time you say you you type a word and then uh, it's not quite right you go backspace you're pulling mm -hmm. yourself out of the story every time you're making an yes. edit or a change you're pulling yourself out of the story that's exactly it or like rewriting a sentence like mm -hmm. I can rewrite those when I edit I don't yeah. need to rewrite the sentences yeah. now and you might <laughs> like... cut the scene later and then yeah. you've gone and you've edited it and revised it and all this stuff. So, yeah, yeah, that's that can definitely be a huge block. That's really frustrating. <laughs> and that leads us right into our next segment about writer's block. Aha. Uh -huh. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You already know my stance on this, so I guess I'll just kind of take it away. I think I've talked about this in episode one, in uh, season one as well. So <laughs> this might be some double up on information, but... Um, I don't, I don't like the term writer's block. I haven't liked it for a long time. Um, I used to use it all the time, but I just find it way too easy to twist it into this unhelpful excuse. Just giving any reason why I'm not writing, I'm having trouble writing, just slotting it all under writer's block doesn't feel very helpful to me because it's practically the same thing as saying, well, my muse is just not answering my calls today. So, uh, yep, yeah, I'm hooped. Uh, and <laughs> that's not true. Um, I don't, I don't believe in the muse thing either. So I like to say that I don't believe in writer's block and writer's block is a myth. But if you like that language and that's a vocabulary that you want to keep, instead we can try drilling down into maybe what we can call the types of writer's block, which I'm, I'm yes. willing to compromise on this <laughs> um, <laughs> for the sake of anyone whose opinion differs from mine, which there will be plenty. So that is totally fine. But yeah, if you want to talk about the types of writer's block or the reasons why you're having trouble writing, that's mm -hmm. that's all writer's block is. It's a set of reasons why you're having trouble getting words on the page. And once I drill down to a specific issue that I'm having, I can usually figure out a different strategy for dealing with it. And that's what, you know, you sit down in front of a blank page, you're having trouble. I decide to outline my scene a little bit. And then all of a sudden, wow, I've got 2,000 words. Where did those come from? So <clears throat> it does work, but I created a little list of the types of writer's block. It is a not an exclusive list, so there could be other ones on here, but uh, Maria liked them, so I thought I would read them yeah, for everyone. I love them. <laughs> um, so number one, blank page, blank brain. I think that's one we've both experienced many times over mm -hmm. the past week. <laughs> it's been the most yep. prevalent one. Um, and that's maybe where all writer's blocks start. You've got a blank page, mm -hmm. you've got a blank brain. Nothing's coming. Nothing's working. There's also the cursed cursor. This is similar. It's just you've got that blinking cursor and for some reason it's really distracting and it's not helping you generate anything. You're just staring at the blink and you're like, why does it do that? Does it have to do that? Can you turn that off? I believe you can in your settings, by the way, um, but it's still doing it. And you don't want to go through the trouble of finding your settings and figuring it out because you're not an mm -hmm. IT person like your husband and you want to just ask him to do it for you. Now I'm descending into a rabbit hole that you don't need to hear about. Um, <laughs> the next one is the attack of constant notifications. And this is when you, maybe you've kept your phone next to you on vibrate or whatever because you know you're waiting for a certain thing and you need to be there for when it's on your phone. Um, Maybe you just forgot to put it on silent because you know that that'll be more helpful in the long run. But the attack of constant notifications, I think that happens to everybody. And then the next one related to that is my phone is on silent and face down on my desk. And how did I get on Instagram? And then I'll be chatting with you on Instagram. And it's like, wait, That's we were both worst. in a writing sprint and now we're both on Instagram. And how did we get here? And there's no and we're like, what are you doing here? It's like that Spider-Man <laughs> meme where they're like, da-da. The and it, yeah, together. you can't even yeah. like call the other person out because like we yeah, know we're both, we're both supposed there. to be writing. We're oh. in a chat together about how we're both supposed to be writing. But then we're both on Instagram. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Social media is the devil and I will accept it no argument. <laughs> Okay, and then some, like, real reasons for writer's block. I've written myself into a hole, and I don't know how to crawl back out. Mm -hmm. That sometimes involves cutting words, which is killing darlings, which is very painful for everyone. I just want to fix this one thing before I write some more, and oops, how did I end up with three more variations of chapter one? When did that happen? This is for oh, you rewriters there. out there. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, where you go back, and you're like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna read. I'm just gonna read a little bit to see, mm -hmm. you know, what I wrote last time. It's a lie. You're not just going to read. You're going to yeah. edit and you're going to revise yeah. and you're going to bring that inner critic to life. And then when you go to sit down and type new words, you're not going to be able to because the <laughs> inner critic is the one talking and the creative is not the one talking. So, um, yeah, that's what my textbooks are telling me. And uh, I'm believing them. It's happening too often <laughs> for me to not to. 
<laughs> no, it definitely, it's definitely out there. The the thing that I I run into the constant notifications, uh, I come from a family who really likes group chats. Um, mm. And I love them. I love them. But also like shut up. So <laughs> I have muted most of my group chats because sometimes like I will pick up my phone and there's like 30 messages in the chat and it's just oh, my, my mom goodness. and my brother talking to each other about like home decor. And I'm like, couldn't you guys have just texted that to each other instead of like sending me 30 notifications about like windows, like, you know, so, so stuff like that. And then, um, I mean, I, I make fun of my, my dad for this, but I also do this where you uh, like message someone because you're like thinking of the thing and you're like, if I don't message them right now, I'll forget. So I work for him. So he does that to me a lot. Uh, and it's really annoying when I'm in the middle of like my writing and he'll like, Hey, remember we got to do the you know, X, Y, Z on Monday. And I'm like, well, now all I'm thinking about is like, maybe I should prep that stuff. So it's ready for him on Monday. Right. That's so like Monday's problem. <laughs> Monday, Yeah. And I have a problem. Like I'm super good at telling my friends that I'm like, that's Monday's problem. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not so good at doing it to myself. So <laughs> my <either>. solution <laughs> to all of those phone ones is to put your phone in another room, mm -hmm. put it away, yeah. like far enough away that it's not within arm's reach. Like you yep. physically have to get up and leave. So like I put my phone usually in the kitchen mm -hmm. and then I go all the way down the hallway down to my office where I write. And then if I write like a certain amount, like it'd be like in 500 words, I can go check my Instagram. <laughs> This is what we've come to. Yeah. And it's funny how that's a motivation. Like is we're so addicted to our phones. Right. So I was like, that actually, it kind of works for me. Um, so yeah, that's definitely uh, a writer's block for me. Um, but the other one that gets me is the imposter syndrome. Yeah. That one hits. And that is actually, I would say the biggest writer's block, like cause of writer's block for people uh, when you're sitting there and you have the blank page and the blank brain and you're almost like afraid to mm. put words down because you're like what if they suck but the thing is like you're the only one reading them if they suck yeah. so just put them down anyway and mm. I'm totally gonna take my own advice guys <laughs> totally promise. this time this time for sure <laughs> this time for real <laughs> Um, but yeah, I definitely, I do that too. And like, I sent, um, my first two chapters of this story out to our writers group. Mm -hmm. I think it was last month actually. Yep. And I was all like, I don't know about the story. Like I was actually going to start a new project for Nano. I was going to give up and be like, you know what? I'm just going to follow this like one oh. vibe I have for another story and just say, screw it. Yeah. And then I got my feedback on those first two chapters that I wasn't sure about. And I got <laughs> probably the best feedback I've ever gotten on my writing before. Wow from the whole group as yep. a whole so I was like whoa I'm really delivered I guess like if everybody said it was good <laughs> that's mm -hmm. good good odds mm -hmm. so that was actually what helped me help motivate me to keep going with this story instead mm -hmm. of starting like dropping it and starting a new draft I love um that. yeah so that was kind of a that. that was kind of a tough one so the yeah imposter syndrome is a big one like we have done an episode on it and I feel like mm -hmm. we could talk about like we could talk about it forever it's just mm -hmm. something everybody runs into so if you're stuck definitely have that little inward look at yourself and say why am I stuck mm -hmm. <laughs> you know like and one of the other tricks uh actually that helps me get unstuck when I'm feeling like I can't get words out is um I will go do something else and like daydream about my story like purposely yep. daydream about it Yep. That one is probably my favorite. And I actually often like walk my dogs in the morning and I listen to music and I'll daydream about my projects. And sometimes like I'll stop and make a couple notes on my phone because like, as everybody knows, can't remember anything <laughs> if I don't write it down. Um, and so I'll do that. And then I can go back to my notes. Like I've come back to my notes and been like, oh, I forgot I came up with that. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to add that. <laughs> That's my so, favorite. That's a good trick. Yeah. Um, I know Elise has some some other tricks as well. So I'll yeah. let you uh, chat about those for a sec. I really like the daydream one. That's 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 one of my favorite ones. I was gonna I was gonna tell a quick story. I um I was trying to write. I was trying to fill a plot hole. Book two, Heart of the Forest, which just came out last week. I got <laughs> feedback. I got like my last phase of feedback back from you, um, and mm -hmm. you'd pointed out something that I. I think I noticed in the previous draft, but I just chose not to, for whatever reason, I chose not to fix it. Like, what's wrong with me? But you were like pointing out like, yeah, no. I was like, uh, 
<laughs> Damn it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to fix it. Um, and I sat down to get through some edits and I got to that part of the manuscript and I was like, I, I don't, I got nothing. This book is releasing in less than a month and I have to fix this before I publish it and I don't know how to do it. I don't see a solution to this. <laughs> and I was sitting there for a while and I could not figure it out. So I fixed some other things. I was like, whatever. I was like, okay, it's it's time to have supper. And then my husband and I cl- go rock climbing three times a week at the gym. Um, so I was like, okay, I just, I have to go. It's, it's, it's not happening today. It's a weekend problem. Um, so we ate and we got all ready for the gym. We go out there. And um, so if you've never been to a rock climbing gym, we go bouldering, which is the kind of rock climbing where you're not using ropes. You don't climb very high and you're just solving um, a rock climbing problem. Like there's a bunch of problems set up on the wall in different colors. So they're color coded um, and they're different grades and different levels. And then you just kind of like problem solve each one and see if you can complete it. It's like checking off a task list for me, which is I think why I enjoy it so much. Because it's like I go Ooh, and I, I pick I pick a climb, I get it done, check, move on to the next one, get it done, check. And especially if I'm doing like the higher levels, I'm getting a bunch of easy ones and then I'm getting some harder ones. It feels really good. So it was a really quiet night at the gym. We go with my brother. So my husband and my brother were off in one corner climbing. I was, I'm not quite as good as they are. <laughs> so <laughs> I was in another corner working on something else by myself. And it's usually a very social thing, but it was just like we had the gym to ourselves for whatever reason. No one was out. So I was sitting down between climbs because you have to take a break. You can't just like hit the wall over and over again or else your arms die and you can't do anything. So, um, <laughs> so you take lots of bra- breaks and that's why it's so social. But I was sitting down and staring at the wall, trying to figure out this climbing problem. And at the same time, I was thinking about my story. And somehow that merged into me daydreaming about my writing problem and about this plot hole that I needed to fill. And by the end of the night, I had made a bunch of progress on this climb and I'd solved my plot hole problem oh, at I the same that. time. And it was the most beautiful thing. It was the most beautiful moment of my life. That's exaggerating, but <laughs> I felt really good about it. It was more of like writing life. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, oh my gosh. so the daydream- daydreaming and problem solving while you're doing something else, that is mm-hmm. uh, tried and true. Like that, that'll work half the time or nine times yeah. out of 10, maybe even. Um, shower thoughts. It's a thing. Go take a shower and just think yeah. about it and see what you come up with. Um, my other personal favorite is lists. When I'm stuck mm-hmm. on something, I make a list of all the different things that could happen. And when I say all, I mean all. Like, I mean, a penguin could swoop in and just, like, slide down the hill next to my characters. They're not in the, the North Pole. That's not a thing that happens. There are no penguins. But, okay, a penguin could swoop in. That's a dumb idea. But inner critic is not talking right now. So we're not allowed to say whether the idea is dumb until I have a list of 100 things. <laughs> <laughs> so I make a list. And progressively... Every time without fail, the things that I list start getting better and better. So I start with the penguin, which is shit. And then I get down to like thing number 10. And it's like, this is the biggest twist in history. And I'm a writing genius. And I'm not, but I feel like I am. So I use it and it works out great. That's the best feeling ever. (laughs) It is. You're like, I'm a genius. It only lasts for like 10 seconds. (laughs) Until you have to actually write the scene. (laughs) Yes. You're like, I take it back. This is hard. (laughs) Yeah, so those are, those are some of my favorite. And then if all else fails, take a break. Give yourself some mm-hmm. grace and just take a break because honestly, that'll serve you longer. Like, I really like big extended blocks of time where I'm doing a few hours of writing at a time. That's how I got my 9K on Monday. That's how I work the best. But um, it's been scientifically proven, I believe, that people work best in focus blocks of like 45 minutes at most, which makes me cry. Because I want like four solid hours to feel like I've made, you know, some, I've gotten some good work done. 45 minutes is all I get. And then I have to get up and stretch. Um, So yeah, if that's all you do, you do 45 minutes, 15 minute stretch break, 45 minutes again. That can be a really good way to just keep your brain going. And then take a walk, do something active to get your blood flowing, to get those endorphins going. And that, that's usually going to help you a lot in the long run. You'll at least get some words in and then... You can go back and fix them later, but at least you're not sitting at zero. Exactly. And I find, yeah, I find exercise to be one of the the really helpful things to do before writing or like break up your writing blocks with exercise. Um, because a lot of time, not that it's mindless, but um, 
your brain can kind of go a bit on autopilot when you're exercising, like yeah. walking or whatever. You kind of start to go on autopilot. I sometimes like in yes. spin class, it's like really loud with the lights and like the music and stuff. It's dark, but it's kind of nice because no one's talking to me. No one can reach me, no phone, nothing. And I'll sometimes just like listen to the instructor. Like I'm on autopilot and listening, mm-hmm. but I'm thinking about like my writing, whatever, um, my goals and stuff like that. And that actually is a good time to do it because I can't, uh, get out of my own head like I mm-hmm. <laughs> and can't be distracted mm-hmm. so that's been that's pretty helpful um one of the other things that I do when I'm feeling like not necessarily blocked but like if I'm on like a really slow go with writing like I'm getting like a sure. hundred words and it's like you know tea. you know where you're trying to go but it's just getting there is just not can't happening. get there yeah. yeah so that's when I get into writing sprints yeah. so it's something we do together all the time and it's like one of my like recommended ways to write really uh, so like we usually do it in little blocks so if if I'm having a slow Elise is great because she's very rarely having a slow time but I often <laughs> have slow times so we will do for me 15 minute sprints <laughs> and then we have to check in with a word count um you yeah. know and Elise is like 600 and I'm like 105 <laughs> <laughs> and then it reverses with the next one and you're like yeah I got 800 and I'm like I got 47 because I'm on Instagram yeah. Yes, that is also what happens. It helps us stay on task a little. Yeah. Um, but once we get on a roll, we'll extend our sprints mm-hmm. to like 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we'll have a sprint with a word count goal too, which I find the most effective when we're in NaNoWriMo, especially. So like, I'll be like, we're doing a, a 15 minute sprint and I'm going to get 500 words. Like yeah. I have to haul ass yeah. to get 500 words yeah. in 15 minutes. Like, and so in a way I'm like kind of competing more with myself than with you, but it does, it does work. Um, and if you don't have a writing buddy to sprint with, and they're not free to sprint with you when you are writing, um, you can totally enlist the help of someone just close to you. Like Mm -hmm. my husband gets to be this person a lot. I'll be like, (laughs) I'm going to do a writing sprint and I'm going to come get you at like 315 and tell you how many words I did. So I get a couple things done where it's like, if he doesn't hear from me from by 315, he'll be like, how many words do you have? Um, <laughs> and I have to get up and kind of move around and like go find him wherever he is in the house. And I tell him, and he's also like a major cheerleader. He's like, that is so awesome. Aww. Like, <laughs> you know, That's so adorable. Cute. Yeah, it's cute. And then um, one year, actually, I uh, we have this little half wall in our house and I sit sat in my chair before my wrist problems got bad I could write in my recliner Mm. anyways I would sit in my recliner and we had this little half wall that leads downstairs and he would play uh video games and I would yell every time I hit like 500 words and he would throw me a Halloween candy oh yeah I remember that one that's genius so I won that year um I probably also gained a couple pounds (laughs) So that kind of stuff works too. Like, uh, like we've talked about the reward system a lot. Right. And I think a lot of the time we, we've talked about the reward system, like for something big, like you finished your draft, mm-hmm. you yeah. get a reward. Yeah. Um, when you're doing nano or sometimes you just need some help, you, you can give yourself boost. rewards for 500 words mm-hmm. or hundred words. Like, yeah just whatever helps kind of get you through. Like mm-hmm. I've been doing, um, you know, 500 words, I'm going to go make a cup of tea, 500 words. And I'm going to, go have a snack. 500 words, we're going to take the dogs for a walk. When I get back, I'm going to do another 500 words. And like doing them, I actually have noticed the 500 word block thing works really well for me because what actually happens is I usually write way more than 500 words. Yeah, and then you feel good. Exactly. Then I'm like, I killed that one. I got like 800 words. I love it. So yeah, sometimes you're just tricking yourself, honestly. Mm-hmm. I feel like so much of writing is just kind of tricking yourself. When Tricks you're and bribery. Roll. Just exactly. bribe the heck out of that and you'll be done. In bribery is awesome. <laughs> it works for a lot of things. Like when you're training like dogs, for example, mm-hmm. like they get treats and praise when they do something right. So like you should do that for yourself. Yeah, well. humans like to think they're above all that, but nah. Why we're do you not, think kids really like candy animals. so much? <laughs> Yeah. Oh my God. It's so true. Yeah. That's why like we do stuff like if I can get through this horrible work day, I'm going to go to like McDonald's on the way home or something. You know what I mean? Like I know everybody does that. They're like, if I could just do this thing that I can have this. Yeah. So we definitely, uh, yeah. The reward system is a, is a great trick. And that's the tea on NaNoWriMo in the trenches. We'll see you in two weeks for a chat about wrapping up NaNoWriMo and dealing with writing burnout. Happy writing.